Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we have a quick and easy one on stress transformation equations. I won't hold you for too long. We're going to explain what all this means on the right side, uh, what these formulas are meaning as well, uh, and we're going to be using an example to explain it. So today we have a question that goes, the thin square plate shown is uniformly deformed such that uh, strain at x, strain at y, and shearing strain uh, are given. And we're going to show a picture of what that's going to look like on this original element. So it's asking us to determine the normal strain epsilon n or normal strain n and normal strain t in the plate. And it's also asking for the shearing strain with respect to that n t uh, coordinate. So what does this mean? Pretty much this problem is giving us an orientation that this element is being uh, subject to. So originally we're given a point on a structural member as such and we're asking to rotate it about 45 degrees from that original orientation such that it produces different strains on that element. Now element is a funny word uh, that we've used before when we were explaining stress transformation. I'm going to use a similar example uh, in a way to explain it again. So let's imagine that we're looking at a point on a structural body and we're analyzing an infinitesimally small element. And that small element is going to be using lengths dy and dx for its initial sizes. And we're assuming that stresses are acting on the element and it's going to create deformation. So this dashed outline is the final uh, deformed shape of this initial element. Now we have elongation that's occurring in this case, which is represented by uh, epsilon x dx. And we're taking this formula that we already know which is normal strain is equal to deformation over the initial length. In our case, we're taking the initial length as dx for x in this case. And we're just isolating for that deformation. And it's going to leave you with epsilon x dx. Now, similarly, we can uh, consider uh, the shearing strain that's created about this element as well. Uh, and we have a relation that we know uh, for this y-x coordinate system. Since we have shearing strain as a measure in radians, we know that the angle being produced between this axis system is going to be pi over 2. Because we know that a full 360 is going to be equal to 2 pi. So we could take that relationship and say that this interior angle is going to be pi over 2, taking away whatever angle is created uh, between the deformation uh, new size. So we have shearing strain xy, shearing strain xy here as well, but they're divided by 2 and cumulatively they take away from that pi over 2. So this is all very similar to stress transformation which we've covered before and now we're looking into the concept of a different orientation with that same element and it's going to be creating an angle between the x and the n axis which we've looked at previously and we also have an angle being created between the x and the t axis as well. We're going to be using these thetas to plug into our strain equations. So uh, the equations were derived uh, in a similar fashion that we looked at uh, in that previous video. So if you want to take a look at that for strain, or for stress rather, you could take a look at the top. But to save some time, I just simply wrote down the equations that we're going to be using that the very smart guys went ahead and derived for us. So we have a uh, normal strain and we have it about the n axis and the t axis respectively. And the only difference is going to be that theta that we're using in the equation. And all the other variables are given to us in the problem. And for the shearing strain nt, simply meaning the change in size with respect to the nt plane, we're going to be using angle uh, theta n. So that's just the angle with respect to x and n uh, created between based on the orientation. And we have the conventions that we derived from our previous video, where we know that an elongation for normal strain will produce a positive value. And a shearing strain will be positive if the angle created between the reference lines decreases. So this was a typo in the previous video, but I just want to explain uh, why this is happening now that we have this rule here. So we know that if we have pi over 2 here, the formula is taking pi over 2 minus the shearing strain. So if this was a minus value, 
it would actually be taking that minus sign as well, changing it to a positive, and increasing the angle between the x, y. So that's, uh, that's the reasoning behind this being decreasing instead of increasing. So now that we know these conventions as, as well, we can look at what's going on with this problem here. So if we know that we have a positive strain in the x direction normal and a negative strain in the y, we can actually plot that we have an elongation along the x and a compression along y. And the shearing strain is a negative value, meaning that is, that is going to create an angle that is larger than that pi over 2 based on the y, x given. So let's see what that looks like just in a quick drawing here. All right, so just as a quick visual, I've drawn up what the deformation will look like in this original orientation. Uh, just shifting that plane right to the corner of this x, y coordinate system. We have elongation in the x given by that positive epsilon x or normal strain x, meaning that this point is going to be jutting out slightly. Uh, and then similarly for the y, we have a compressive uh, strain, meaning that this point is going to be decreasing with respect to this y-axis. And then the shearing strain is a negative value, meaning that this angle is going to be increasing. We've already talked about why that is based on this formula right here. So now we have that visual, we can hop in the problem and identify what variables we need to solve. All right, so now we can hop into solving the problem. The first thing we need to do is identify these theta values. We have the angle between x and n for theta n and the angle between x and t for theta t. Theta n is going clockwise, meaning this value is going to be negative. And we can deduce that this angle is going to be 45 degrees because we have an evenly sized plate with this axis going directly to the corner of it, meaning that this will be negative 45 degrees. And theta t will be positive 45 degrees, going in the opposite direction from x to t. Uh, and now we can simply start plugging in. Uh, I'll stick around here while we do the first one. Let's plug into this first part of the equation. We have normal strain x plus normal strain y, which are given. So 1750, that's going to be minus here, 2200, zero, zero, divided by 2, plus the same thing, except now we're doing minus negative 2200 zero, zero, over 2, taking the cos of 2 times which angle? Theta n. So we're doing negative 45 here. And we also have the next part of the equation, which is the shearing strain, which is negative 800 over 2 sine 2 times negative 45. And solving that will leave you with a value of 175 micrometers per meter. Why did I choose this unit? I chose this unit because it was the value given in this problem for all of their strain values. So I'm just keeping it consistent. Uh, and when you have them all as micro, you can simply plug them in without using any conversions and writing your final answer as it is. Now I'm going to proceed and do the same uh, for strain with respect to t and the shearing strain and t. So I'll plug that in for you, and you can double check and see if I made any mistakes. Uh, but I'll see you when I'm done. All right, so these are your final answers for normal strain uh, n, normal strain t, and shearing strain nt.